Hello, let's quickly look at the letters of 1st and 2nd Corinthians and complete chapter 26. Yeah, as you can see over here, uh, this is a survey of the letters to the Corinthians. So uh, there, are, there is a lot of things that we can study about Corinthians and the book, uh, but there will be definitely a course on the book of Corinthians separately. So it'll be good that we can study deeply in that. But here we're just going to have a survey. So it'll be very short, very small. So there will be not much details, just an overview of the letter of Corinthians. So the letters that are now called 1st and 2nd Corinthians actually belong to the original collection of four letters of to the Corinthians. So there were four letters written to Corinthians, but we have only two and the two other have been lost. So Paul sailed from Corinth to Greece to Ephesus, where he happened to spend some time. Okay, so he traveled from Corinth in Greece to Ephesus, where he was staying. And from Ephesus, he wrote this letter of Corinthians. Now, he, was, he heard of a lot of problems happening in the church of Corinth. So Corinth, you have to understand, is a place where uh, it's like a melting pot, like a metropolitan city. A lot of money is there. A lot of, um, you know, uh, fanciful life is there. A lot of religions are there. A lot of idolatry is there. Prostitution, immorality, everything is there in uh, Corinth. So there, therefore, a lot of problems also happen to, in the church of Corinth because it is surrounded by all these issues. So it definitely infiltrates into the church also. So Paul hears the problems in the church of Corinth and he wrote to them a letter to avoid having immoral persons in the church. So he says you should not have immoral people in the church and, and to contribute to the needs of Christians in Jerusalem. So there are two things which we see in the first letter, which, is, which, which we do not have right now. So the first two, two things that we see in that letter uh, was that they should not associate or have immoral people in the church. The second was to contribute to the needs of the Christians in Jerusalem. This letter is now lost. This letter which talks about this uh, disassociating with the people, immoral people is lost and is uh, what is referred to in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, where he wrote, I have written to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral peoples, which means we do not have any letter before that, which is lost now. Okay, so this the second letter, we have the second letter, which we see as the first letter. So shortly after that, Paul received the news from close household of the problems in the church. So he wrote another longer letter to deal with all these problems. Okay, so this letter is the first Corinthians that we have, which actually is the second letter uh, from Ephesus, Ephesus around 56 AD, dealing with the many problems arising in a newly formed Christian community in a pagan environment notorious for its immorality. So it was known, Corinth was known for its immorality and it was creeping inside the church also. So the first letter where he said, uh, which is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 9, he said he asked the people to disassociate or remove the people who are immoral from the church. So that letter is lost. So after the people did not listen to him, people did not accept or uh, you know, understand the teaching, did not uh, accept the teachings. So they, and then Clo wrote a lot of things, a lot of issues are happening in the church. So to discuss those issues, to correct those problems, Paul wrote the second letter, which is the first Corinthians that we have right now. And it happens actually, that is the real second letter to the Corinthians. Okay, so now he deals, in this letter, he deals with five main issues. The letter that is the first Corinthians that we have right now, but in reality, which is the second letter, because the first letter is lost. So he deals with five main issues in the church. He deals with a case of incest. Okay, then the court cases between members, then abuse of Christian freedom, and a general clause regarding, regarding the services, especially the Lord's Supper. So these were the topics which were mainly dealt by Paul in this letter of 1 Corinthians, where he was talking about a man, have, a boy having a relationship within the family, a young boy having a relationship with his father's wife, that is having a relationship within the family. It's called incest. Then we have two brothers having conflict, property conflict, and they are going to the court. Then we have uh, the people who are abusing the freedom, the Christian freedom, because they said that uh, as we follow Christ, we become free. So we can see that they were abusing this freedom and they were becoming stumbling block for the others. So this is what Paul is addressing, that you should not become stumbling block to the others because of the freedom that you have gained in Christ. So there is general chaos regarding the services because of the Lord's Supper. So the rich were 
the Lord Supper was uh, conducted in different houses, usually the rich houses. So the rich would uh, come in first and the men, rich men would have their food first and to get drunk and then they leave and then the women would come in and they would get something to eat and the children and then the poor were the last and they did not receive anything to eat. So that was a main issue that Paul is dealing with over here. And he says, if you're hungry, you eat from home and come. Do not, you know, spoil the fellowship, the Lord's Supper when you're meeting in the in the fellowship or in the church or in somebody's house. So that was what he was dealing with over there. It is. It also deals with several of the other problems that is a delegation from uh, there. And he had asked about such questions about marriage and single life, problems about food offered to idols, where the women should be veiled and their place in the church meetings, the matter of spiritual gifts and the resurrection of the dead. So in the second uh, uh, list of problems, we can see that he was asked about uh, whether to be single or to be married, which is better in uh, living a Christian life. So he talks about that. And then it also uh, talks about immoral life over there where there was a lot of prostitution taking place, homosexuality taking place, where the adult men were having relationships with the younger boy, tender boys. And then there were like uh, problems where uh, people were keeping Gnostic views where uh, they considered the spirit to be pure and the uh, a body to be evil so you can do anything with your flesh as far as you're keeping your holy life uh, spirit safe from the physical uh, 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 dirt okay so that was all that was also happening then the husband wife were not having proper relationships so a lot of teachings he's giving about that so he's not saying whether marriage is better or single life is better but he said both have their own challenges and both have their own issues so problems of food offered to idols mainly there were two issues uh, that he could see that the prasad thing that if food offered to idols if it is given to you what should you do should you eat or not and the second problem is uh, whether you should participate in the table of lord and also the table of other gods and goddesses so that was a problem that uh, uh, paul was dealing with over there and then there was a problem whether women should be veiled in the churches in the fellowship or should they cover their head or not and the next is whether they should speak or be take the leadership positions in the church or not so paul is solving all those issues also and then there comes the matter of spiritual gifts whether people were thinking that the gift of tongues was superior than the all other gifts of prophecy and everything uh, then paul says it's better to have the gifts of prophecy as well so he also says that the same gifts the same spirit gives all the gifts the gift of healing the miracle the you know prophecy the tongues everything is being given by the holy spirit so all gifts are equal so he says that no gift is superior, no gift is inferior. Every gift is equally important and is given from God as a gift from the spirit. So it should be dealt with respect. And he says that all these gifts should be used or practiced or exercised with love. Without love, there is no value of these gifts. So he says that love is the most important in using of these gifts. There is, should be no competition, but it should be done in only love and compassion. Lastly, he talks about resurrection of the dead and he corrects the teachings and he tells them uh, how uh, the dead will be resurrected in the same manner as Christ was resurrected from the dead. So the outline that we see over here is uh, chapter 1 verses 1 to 9 is a prologue. Chapter 1 verse 10 to chapter 4 verse 21, it addresses factions within the church. Then we have chapter 5 verse 1 to chapter 6 verse 20, addressing moral and ethical problems. Then we have chapter 7 verse 1 to 40, instructions about marriage. Chapter 8 verse 1 to 11 verse 1, instructions about questionable practices. Chapter 11 verse 2 to chapter 14 verse 4, 40, instructions about corporate worship. Chapter 15, verse 1 to verse 28, instructions about the resurrection. And lastly, chapter 16, verse 1 to 24, conclusion. Let's move to the second letter that we have today. The, since, uh, since the Corinthians had not corrected their problems, Paul sent the third letter. It was a very stern letter. The third letter that Paul wrote was a very stern letter. Uh, it, it is referred to in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8, saying, for if I had made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it. For I see that the letter grieved you, though only for a while. Okay, with this letter we do not have. So this third letter and the first letter we do not have. These letters have been lost, but their references can be seen in the letters that we have. Then first Corinthians, we can see a reference to the first letter. And the second Corinthians, we have the reference to the third letter. Now, this was followed by a letter to which we call now is second corinthians so first letter is lost 
second letter is our first corinthians third letter is loss and the fourth letter is our second corinthians okay that we have right now so first and the third letters are lost we have the second and the fourth letter which we call as first and second corinthians titus who was sent to corinth to correct the matters came back with a good news that the people have accepted uh, the teachings of paul and the correction of paul and they have changed themselves and so paul wrote the fourth letter uh, to restore his relationships with the church because he had he said that he is going to you know uh, severe his relationships with the church and he was scolding them and he was very angry with them so now the people have accepted his teaching and corrected themselves and now they have they uh, they have done what paul has asked them to do so now when he receives this news from titus that corinthian church has corrected its wrong doings and the problems and the issues so paul is very happy with them and he shows his joy and expresses his relief and he says he wants to restore his good relations with them so he wrote this fourth letter so second corinthians is the most personal of all letters that we can see and it has his intense burden it shows his intense burden for the church so he has a lot of burden for this church at corinth there is deep love that is seen for the church at corinth and for them and his deep concern for the spiritual progress progress of the church at corinth because he knows that this place is this church is in a place where it is surrounded by a lot of sinfulness a lot of materialism a lot of wrong teachings and heresies so he was specifically very concerned about this church at corinth because it was a new church going among uh, amidst a lot of you know um a lot of worldly issues worldly immoralities and worldly uh, issues and problems so he was very concerned that god should keep them protected from all these outside adversities it is an emotional personal autobiographical letter he rebukes them for questioning his apostolic authority but also praises them for repenting Uh, so in all their struggle and argument they were questioning his apostolic authority like who sent him why is he bossing over us and all those things were happening so he had to clarify his apostolic authority over them he defends his commission by recounting his trials for the sake of the gospel and states the anxiety he suffered while waiting for their response to his defense okay so we can see that uh, he has toiled for the gospel and he says he has been called by god and he has been sent by god to them so he had to prove his apostolic authority to them that he is their father that he is the one uh, through whom the church has been established he is the one who uh, is authoritative he is the one who has uh, the rights to ask them and correct them so he had to defend himself and he he had also he waited uh anxiously in return uh, in, in, in expecting a positive reply from the church which he did receive and he is very happy so we see his unshakable faith shining through all this and transforming every circumstance so we can see paul was very determined that he will stand faith strong in his faith and he will correct the church and he will stand with the church pray for them and we can see this desire for this church this uh, love for this church can be seen through his let us especially the second letter to the corinthians let's look at the outline second corinthians chapter 1 verse 1 to 11 is the introduction chapter 1 verse 12 to 7 verse 14 is the nature of paul's apostolic ministry how he was ministering to them chapter 7 verse 5 to 16 is paul's reconciliation with the church because he is happy that they have accepted his teachings chapter 8 verse 1 to chapter 9 verse 15 is a collection for the christians in jerusalem Uh, 10 verse 1 to 13 verse 10 is Paul's defense of his apostolic authority. Lastly, chapter 13 verse 11 to 13 is the conclusion. So this is all from first and second Corinthians. I hope you have got a glimpse of what the letter is all about. So we have completed chapter 26. We'll meet soon with chapter 27. Thank you. God bless you.